All right. I'll call the meeting to order and I will take roll call. Carol Allen. Uh, Woodruff Tyrell. And Jenny Abilene. Shelby Stephenson. I'm here. Victoria Rizzo, me. <laughs> Twyla. Present. Shirley Winters. Here. Wade Bakley. Present. Okay. Is that our new alternate? Mm -hmm. Um, he's, um, he's from, um, Reynolds School District. Oh, is he new to us? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Do you want to introduce yourself briefly? <laughs> Hi, my name is Wade Bakley. I am the Chief Operations Officer for the Reynolds School District. Um, I'm really glad that you've invited me and I'm looking forward to doing what I can. Excellent. Great. Thanks for being here. Okay. Um, any public comment? Paul, Jeff, any comment? No, thank you. Um, thank you. And nobody's here. So the next order of business we have is to elect a vice chair. Do we have any nominations? I nominate Twyla. I would like to nominate Woodrow. Oh, okay. <laughs> and here I was going to uh, nominate Mary. <laughs> She's not here. <laughs> okay, well, will any of you guys accept the nomination? Does anybody not accept the nomination? No. I co chair the other, the, um, the CAC, so I don't know if it's an opportunity that you might be interested in. Oh, are you the vice chair of that? I can't even remember. I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, yes I will accept. Okay. And then set. Second, whatever. And then second? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, I vote yes. Let's take a vote. Um, for Winter Tyrell for vice chair. I, 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 thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Should have bought more treats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should have. No, yes, you should have. Point All right. And <laughs> let's approve the September meeting. We didn't have an October meeting, so we just have September. First, did anybody notice any? Problems with these? I didn't notice any. No, I didn't notice any. I'll make Nothing. a motion to approve. I'll second. Same too. <laughs> Chloe resigned completely, or is she just a chair? Oh, no, she resigned. Okay. Yeah, she has, it sounds like a lot going on. Sounds like. Okay. And now a review of our law enforcement reports, which um, they emailed them out yesterday, and we have topics. Good evening. <clears throat> So we have actually two months to go over because we missed last month. So I'll start with uh, the period uh, starting September 1st and ending September 30th. Um, so during that uh, period, there was 809 total calls in the city of Troutdale. That is a um, slight reduction from the previous 30 day period, but a slight increase over last year's uh, at this same time. Um, in looking at 
where some of the differences were. It looks like there was a slight increase in both theft and traffic accidents uh, during this 30 day period. But aside from that, everything else was pretty, um, pretty similar to previous months. Um, of those calls, 353 were dispatch calls for service and 456 were self-initiated calls for service. Um, of those dispatch calls, 65 of them were priority one or two or emergency calls for service and 273 were priority three for seven, or 337 non-emergency calls for service. Um, as I mentioned, there was a slight increase in traffic ac accidents, which is represented on that uh, particular page regarding traffic accidents. And looking over there, um, it seems like realistically the only place that has some consistency with uh, traffic accidents is the 257th corridor. So from Stark uh, all the way down. Uh, outside of that, it's kind of randomly or sporadic throughout the city. Um, stolen vehicles, there were two vehicles reported stolen during that period. And there, although it doesn't show on here, there was one vehicle recovered during that period. 137 traffic stops made in the city during that time period. Uh, 107 of those warnings were issued, 20 were non-criminal citations. There were a four arrests that were cite in lieu. So an individual was arrested, but given a citation in, in lieu of being lodged. Um, there was one actual arrest, uh, one report written, and that's essentially all of interest as far as traffic stops go. Um, there were uh, there were six uh, detective cases from the month of sem uh, September that were closed in one way, shape, or form, whether that be an arrest made or a referral to uh, the district attorney or, or, or uh, municipal court. Um, and then two previous cases were also disposed. Also, I wanted to add for um, the month of September, I have some uh, additional statistical information. So the Sheriff's Office in conjunction with um, the City of Portland conducted a human trafficking mission um, focused on intervening in instances of human trafficking. Uh, and they did so within the City of Troutdale. During that um, mission, they made 10 arrests nine of those were cited in lieu of arrest so they weren't actually lodged in jail and one of those individuals was lodged in jail looking over the actual calls for service log it was pretty typical of any other month so there were, i didn't see anything that really stood out to me and i also didn't see anything that represented a pattern of a criminal activity in any particular location or any particular type can I just ask, sorry to interrupt you, but when you just talked about the additional statistics, uh -huh. is that what's part of is listed there on that 912, 913, and 914, uh, that prostitution purchase? No, this actually the case of Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Those will be represented in the in, in this, but I just wanted to highlight those. Okay, thank you. All right, moving to the period from October 1st to October 31st, um, only 717 calls. So that was actually a substantial reduction over the previous 31 day period or 31 day period. And also a um, fairly substantial reduction over last year's average at this time. So in looking at where some of those reductions came from, some of those were extra targeted patrol as generally our, we end our um, extra summer community resource deputy that patrols Glen Auto Park roughly in September-ish. We went, we went a little bit longer this year, but usually once that ends, we see a, a reduction in that targeted patrol because that deputy is not constantly patrolling every day and doing that patrol at Glen Auto Park. 
Of those uh, calls for service, 347 were dispatch calls for service and 370 were self-initiated calls for service. Um, 76 emergency calls were dispatched and 261 non-emergency calls were dispatched. Um, traffic stops seem pretty consistent where, you know, reasonably sporadic, but we still see kind of some pattern with that 257 corridor and the intersections related to that um, corridor. Five vehicles reported stolen uh, during this, this period. And it does not show for some reason, and usually it will show a zero if there was zero. So I don't know if it didn't pick up our recovered vehicles, but I don't have data to report on the amount of vehicles recovered this month. Traffic stops made, there was 177 traffic stops made, 130 of which were warnings, 30 were non-criminal citations, traffic tickets, um, seven were physical arrests, uh, three of which there was some type of report written, but not an arrest wasn't made. Two were uh, citations in lieu of arrest. And then uh, in October, there was also six cases uh, that had been referred to detectives that were disposed, of, whether that be by um, arrest or reference to uh, the city or county prosecuting attorney. And then there was three cases that uh, previously existed uh, with detectives that were disposed. And then uh, again, in looking over the calls for service log, fairly typical, nothing stood out. Um, I didn't see any patterns of uh, locations where activity had increased specifically and or um, types of criminal activity had increased. And then finally, I did just want to note that uh, last, our last meeting, I was asked about the number of uh, individuals experiencing houselessness within the city of Troutdale. So I spoke to the HOPE team and within the city limits of Troutdale, they work with on an average five to six different individuals that are experiencing houselessness. So those numbers kind of change and, and wax and wane just because they are constantly, as they identify people that are uh, you know, experiencing houselessness, they start working with them with the end goal of getting them into long-term stable housing. So those numbers are kind of will sometimes creep up slightly and then they'll go down slightly just depending on the availability of shelters um, and the willingness of the individual to go into shelter. So, um, but they said pretty consistently it stays around five to six individuals. Does that include across the river? No, that's, that's outside, yeah, outside the city limits of Troutdale. Um, it seems like I I don't know if this is the whole vehicle. And I'm sorry for interrupting, sir. Um, but the um, is that the sheriff's SUV? But it has hope on the side as well. Yep, those are okay. all our hope vehicles. I'm pretty excited to see that. Okay. Yeah, and just as of note, and I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but um, I recently had an opportunity to talk to the Joint Office of Homeless Services, which I'm sure you're aware is a, a jointly funded by the city of Portland and Multnomah County to um, support, uh, create supportive housing and other resources for those experiencing houselessness. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with them and talk about um, locations in East County to start working on part two of their House Multnomah Now initiative, um, as well as the governor's Oregon All In initiative. And so through that meeting, um, they selected 1,000 acres as that location for that next uh, start of that initiative. And the goal of that initiative is to house 300 people before the end of the year. So they do have, um, and this is all low barrier housing and it's rapid rehousing and it's housing first. So the ideology is that they get somebody into housing and then they provide the supportive services while they're in housing to try to address some of those barriers that might cause them to be houseless in the first place. Um, so we anticipate that starting sometime early or mid this month. So hopefully in the next week or two, 
Um, so there will be a effort down at Thousand Acres to um, start working with those individuals and hopefully getting them into housing where they can work with services to keep themselves housed long term. How many people do you guys estimate are um, living down there in Thousand Acres? On average, it's about, depending on time of year, about 50 to 60. So about 35 camps. As it gets colder, that number goes down because it's very cold out there and people yeah. go into shelter or move to other locations. In the summer months, it usually picks up because it's nice out there. So um, right now, I think they're looking at about 50 individuals living out there. Is that thousand acres proper or does that include when you go down north of uh, the airport, north of the FedEx and the Amazon building or whatever? Um, there's sometimes some people camp down in areas that might be deemed private property for all I know. Um, so the focus will be on everything that's um, east of the Sandy River, so okay. the Sandy River Delta East, okay. which is property that is managed by uh, a combination of the Department of State Lands and U.S. Forest Service. Okay. So we're working closely in a partnership with both those organizations as well as the Joint Office of Homeless Services to coordinate that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Will you be coordinating that as well, personally, or is that something that our department will be participating? Yeah, I and the HOPE team will be uh, closely involved with that. Uh, the HOPE team will probably be um, spending a significant amount of time out there making introductions to people because they spend, you know, hundreds of hours out there uh, building relationships with the individuals living out there. So. Um, they will be hoping to make those introductions to some outreach workers that can connect these folks to um, some housing opportunities. Any, any local resources you'll be reaching out to as well, maybe? Or? Well, the, the primary um, outreach workers that will be coming out are from an organization based out of Gresham called Cultivate Initiative. Um, they've been partners with the HOPE team since basically Cultivate Initiatives kind of formed out here. Um, so they have a long time partnership. So we're just going to continue that partnership. And they are the organization that the Joint Office of Homeless Services contracted with to do that work. Other than that, if there's no questions, that is wraps up. Oh, perfect. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> One more question. Um, and this goes back to the September. And I know sometimes you can't. Um, uh, talk much about the detective cases, but sure. just have more of a general question around that um, that um, sting operation that you guys did around human trafficking. Mm -hmm. did, was that general or did you guys focus in on a, like a certain hotels or um, or is that just across the Troutdale area? I can tell you that we did utilize um, area hotels as a base of operations for that. Right. Um, so we didn't have necessarily particularly identified locations or anything in Troutdale. Um, it just, you know, having hotels in areas of high, um, you know, transportation and things like that tend to be spots where, um, human trafficking can be likely. So that's why we targeted those areas. All right. Thank you. And then just one other question around that. I haven't been into some of the truck stops and areas down there. Do you know, do they have um, resources? Um, like a lot of times in the bathrooms, they'll have information for people who might be trafficking, traffic to. That I don't know. Um, I know that our deputies, as well as our HOPE team members spend a substantial amount of time down there, um, you know, working with individuals and also with an eye for the potential of human trafficking. And as we look forward at, at, at missions like this, I think that we get some of that information out there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how are we doing on staffing? Are we fully staffed? Are we doing positions? Yeah, so currently we are fortunate and probably one of the few fully staffed police agencies in the state. So um, we do have some Part of that staffing being fully staffed includes some deputies who are new deputies who are still in their training phases, whether that be going to the academy or or other places. But as far as our patrol unit, we are fully staffed. Nice to meet you.
Um, any training opportunities coming up in the next few months? Um, things we should know about that you might be seeing more people um, doing different things than they usually do. No, I think, you know, usually we try to, uh, as we go into the holidays, we try to um, minimize some of that training just because people are gone and people are taking vacation. And so um, we will probably start uh, some of our annual type trainings again in, uh, in uh, late winter, early spring. Um, we've also gone to a system now that in, has incorporated a lot of online training. So it's minimized the need to actually have people all meet in one central location, which is beneficial in the fact that it helps with scheduling. It keeps more deputies on the road more often because we're not having to have people leave their patrol duties to go to a all day training. And it also reduces our costs on overtime. Um, so that mod having that model where deputies are doing it almost self-paced with, you know, they're given a time period to complete a training, but it's self-paced and they can do it in times where maybe it's slow, uh, you know, in the evenings or things like that. So that's why you may see less coordinated trainings with large groups of people all in one place. We still have those, but we're just looking at places where it wasn't necessary to have that and uh, looking how we can be more efficient. She's like that. Oh, and I just have one thing and then I'll be quiet for a while. I just wanted to um, give you guys feedback on your social media presence is wonderful. Sometimes I see the sheriff's department more than I did my own friends on there. <laughs> Um, but they just do a great job, I think, of keeping our community informed of some of these um, operations that you guys are running through. So I, it's just very impressive to see that um, they're doing a great job. I'll share that with our communications unit. I know it's been a big focus of the sheriff and the communications unit to really um, make that presence more robust. So I'm glad it's working. Yeah, and it's very positive. And it's great to know that you're it's yeah. seven. But also. I'm sure you continue to recruit members. If there's anything that the you know, community can do to provide outreach, because that we have someone from Reynolds on, you know, career days and you know, some of these younger people and see the positive side of, of what law enforcement can do. So. Absolutely. And I will say that although, you know, we are in the patrol unit are very fortunate and we are fully staffed, fully staffed is kind of a, a misnomer because we are still looking for you know, substantial staffing in our, our uh, corrections division uh, to shore that up. We've had a lot of retirements and uh, a lot of turnover in, in that division. And so they're still working hard to get their numbers up. And then, as I'm sure you're aware, we also provide police law enforcement services for uh, TriMet for the transit. So we are still looking to shore up our transit unit. So, um, Yes, if those uh, recruitment is still going on and we anticipate that continuing to go on, especially as we look at the future of individuals that currently work for us who might be retiring in the near future. And so just trying to do a good job of keeping those numbers up and planning ahead. And of course, I have to you know, plant the seed in your head about scouts and explorer scouts. Mm -hmm. you know, there is a pipeline, so you know, there's a new that. Yeah, thank you. Can I make a possible request that when the information is compiled it's in the same order that you talk to us about it okay um <laughs> I well know. i don't know what order you get it in so that would just be a guess for me whether i'm getting it in the same order that's what i mean so instead of that maybe you tell whoever puts the information together for us the way you're going to talk about it okay yeah i'll work on that or just use the same deck that we did yeah <laughs> I will uh, work to try to get if that's out. possible. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll work on that. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, I finally just finish up with one last thing that, as you know, previously we had discussed and um, what it looked like for the um, red light cameras. 
So I just wanted to touch base and make sure because it was on my notes of to, to ask about that there wasn't a need to have some outside organizations come in or agencies that are currently using that. So I just wanted to plant that seed that if that's needed, um, please let me know. Um, I try to keep a running tally of kind of to do's and notes and that was on my notes to check in and just make sure um, there are a number of agencies and cities, municipalities that are already utilizing that system that I'm sure could come out and have discussion about that um, outside of what I can provide. So please let me know if that's needed. One of the lines, um, I, think, I think in October or sometime, I think Gresham came out with their public safety map on their web on their web page. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's kind of fancy. I don't know uh, how useful it is for everyone, but when it comes to having that discussion about uh, red light cameras, uh, speed cameras, and I know that we have the, the three seven quarters and we have two five seven. Two five seven. Um, if we could you know, plot those incidents on that map, I mean, is if these uh accidents reported, you know, if you can give us a, a cross, let's say a cross section, but if we, you know, it would help us make that decision. If we sure. saw them right along, the, if they were on the 257, right, if we saw that plotted out. And again, I, know, I, I imagine that there's some level of specificity that the public, general public can't have. But if we could see that, then it might make us help us get to a decision on that. So. Yeah, I think if the committee gets to a point where they're looking at a decision on location, then we can certainly have our statistics folks turn this written data into a map so we can actually show that. So we can be very specific on, you know, what are we looking for, injury accidents, non-injury accidents, things like that. So, you know, on, on, on the committee's request, we can certainly come up with something like that. So this is Carol. So I'm still not sold on the red light. I remember, I remember when it was inputted over there in Gresham or at Fairview. It, I remember as a driver it, when it when that light turned, I would slam on my brakes because I didn't want a ticket. And half the time, I mean, I could have been hit more times than I could count. And I am just really concerned about the safety of having a red light. I, I mean, I know we need to do something on 257th, but I'm just really concerned of how many um, accidents that's going to bring that's already there. Well, I can tell I you mean, that as I managed part of that program in, in Fairview because I spent 17 years as a Fairview officer prior to coming to the sheriff's office. Uh, and I can tell you there was no substantial increase in accidents. In fact, there was a decrease in accidents number because the majority of accidents come from people who are running the lights. Um, now, granted, with any any change in in traffic control device, whether it be the addition of lights or stop signs, things like that, there is always a learning curve around that. We see this very same thing with the stop signs here, mm -hmm. um, yeah. with the stop signs up on Troutdale Road. So, you know, there's always a learning curve to that, but. And, and that certainly is a concern, particularly in that learning period where mm -hmm. people are getting used to the fact that, um, that that there's lights up there. But I think that as you look at that and how to mitigate that, I think, you know, robust media about that and providing, making sure that information is out there because, you know, we're not trying to, the, the idea is not to catch people, it's to gain better compliance with the law and make traffic more safe. Uh, and travel more safe. So I would think that, you know, making sure that the media is out there and that it's well publicized that these are there will help with the reduction on those. And that's not to sway you one way or the other. It's just to address the concern that you brought forth. Mm -hmm. Still not sold. Yeah. Yes, I'm just. Not. And ultimately, it's a decision for the committee yes. for a recommendation to the council. That's correct. Um, and you know, for, for as far as the sheriff's office is concerned, we will continue to do proactive patrol and traffic enforcement, regardless of whether there's cameras or not. So, um, you know, we'll continue to do our job regardless of whether the city decides to utilize cameras. Mm -hmm. On two fifty seventh and Stark, and Stark is shared Trotdale Gresham. 
So we'd have to get Gresham's approval also? You only, you'd probably more than getting Gresham's approval, just put cameras facing the one direction that impacted right. um, trout day. Mm -hmm. You mean and the ones heading northbound? He, let's see, so, but the people actually running the light would actually be going southbound. So, oh. so it would actually be, the cameras would be facing southbound because they'd actually be running the light southbound out oh. of Troutdale and Gresham. <laughs> okay. Um, what, I cannot remember, I mean, why did Fairview take theirs out? It, it was it the cost or something? I mean, what was the big reason? Because obviously if it was so helpful, yet yeah, we took them out. So why is that? You know, Troutdale took theirs out as they began to talk with the sheriff's office about taking over police services for them. And at that time, um, to maintain those cameras required um, statutory authority. So the city actually had to go to the legislature and ask for permission to install those cameras. And along with that came a requirement to regularly renew that. And so I think a decision was made, and certainly that was it was above my level because it was a decision made by council. But um, I think a decision was made that since they were considering um, changing out their um, police service provider, that it didn't make sense to move forward with the steps to maintain the cameras. It was very political too, if I remember correctly. That whole putting it in and taking it out was very political for Fairview. I, I, it feels to me like we're getting the cart before the horse when we don't really know all the data, what is really going on in the area. And, and I, I am one that believes that 257th and Stark has issues with people running red lights, but almost all the red lights I ever see run come from Gresham and making the turn um, westbound. So north onto west and it's, you know, that left-hand turn. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that there's not happening in the other, but it seems like it's a little bit of a dicey area who's really, if we don't have Gresham involved, then it seems like it, but again, really where is the data? What's it really saying? Because it's not cheap to get red light camera stuff in there. And if our basis for, you know, doing any of this, um, like I realize life still means more or whatever so it's not only about the cost but at some point it seems like we don't even know where the real problem is or if there is a real problem so to me it's like more data animal so came and told us that um of the traffic studies that have been completed already and correct me if i'm wrong so we never use real data but it's like less than 80 percent of our um, traffic travels at or below the speed limit so just from a traffic a traffic speed perspective, it, it, we wouldn't get a huge lift from some of these cameras. Um, well, just, talking, just from a speed perspective, from, yeah, a, from so a red light the perspective, you know, I, I don't know what, what we got data on that or not. Um, well, the data that we would like, as the sheriff's office, when I look and try to identify areas that we should like look at increased or enhanced enforcement. Like one of the things I look at is crash data. And so as we look at the traffic crash data that's provided in this form, you know, there isn't really a smoking gun of this is the place where all accidents happen in the city. Um, now, with that being said, one of the other things when you look at a, a red light camera program, one of the things you look at is what is the difficulty or how difficult is it to enforce that with a actual deputy in a car so is there an area where a deputy could park and watch that intersection or is it an intersection that's so busy that actually having a deputy there trying to pull out to stop somebody increases the danger in that intersection and so you know that's also one of those things we would look at and you know looking at when fairview looked at intersections we had a pretty significant number of accidents and particularly serious accidents that occurred at 207th and Halsey. And so we could demonstrate that like, there's a lot of accidents there. So that's what kind of started the process. 
Now that after that, the company came out and they actually looked at numerous intersections and did traffic studies on numerous intersections throughout the city. And they also found that there was a substantial amount of red light runners that weren't getting in accidents. So that's how the decision was made or a portion of how the decision was made on 207th and Halls and in Fairview unit. So, you know, that is kind of what I would look at is number one, what's the track crash data show? Now, crash data isn't perfect because it doesn't show all those times people ran a light and got lucky. Um, so I think the other thing you have to look at is if you think or even start to go down this road is having those actual studies done to say, are people running red lights here in any significant number and not getting in crashes? Um, and that's, you know, those are the things I think that that would best justify moving forward with that is having that data first and you know realistically outside of the crash data which um, as you can see for yourselves it's fairly sporadic throughout the city although we do see along that 257 corridor which are our major intersections with a lot of truck traffic and things like that we do see um, an increased number of crashes over other areas in the city we don't have any data to say how many times people made it and didn't get in a crash. So I think that would probably be a focus of it is looking at how do we best get data to say how many people are actually, is it even a substantial problem? If I could just make the comment, um, I'm sure some of you have, are familiar with this, but uh, 257th is getting an overhaul starting uh, I think this coming spring um, from, what is that? The post office road. Cherry, Cherry Park. Park. All the way up to Stark. basically Stark Street. Well, they need to do something because there's so many holes right now in front of the high school at that light. And it's not it's just crazy. that. They're maybe lane getting skinniers and not good. Uh, they're doing serious. Yeah. So for bike lane. Mm -hmm. for a bike lane like when any bike wants to go have bikers that go up there i, I yeah i i know what we but, but so that's not the only thing they're also talking about putting in um partially safe protected crosswalks you know with islandy things in the middle and stuff which could have a huge impact even on some other stuff related to traffic. So it have more accidents yeah. with rear end. I mean, it, it, I just feel like it might be one of these things that it might be nice to talk about the red light camera, but we might need to see what goes transpires with all the mods that are going to go on with 257, at least from my perspective, that's the way I feel about it. And if I may, I think that ultimately, you know, what Mr. Young came in and talked about was not necessarily that you all will make an ultimate decision on whether we're going to get traffic cameras or not, but that you all just compile enough data that you can provide a recommendation to council one way or the other. And that recommendation may be no based on the data you compile. But I think realistically, it's just a data gathering um, exercise in getting the data to find out how you as a committee, what you would recommend to council um, if, if they're even worth get looking further into or if the recommendation of the committee is that they're not worth looking into. Is this data ga gathering um, costing money? Um, I don't imagine it would. I think that probably that the committee could probably request other agencies that are running these programs to come in and I don't imagine that they would charge to do that kind of work. I'm quite sure that many of the uh, companies that provide that service would probably come in and have a discussion with you about what that means for free. So I don't imagine that that, that would cost um, any money, but obviously I don't work for any of those other agencies or any co other companies, but um, I think that would be a question that you all would have to uh, take on as you looked at who do we want to hear from and how do we want to present this to council regardless of what the ultimate recommendation is how do we want to present this and what data do we want to present them to support our recommendation so chief do you have a list of red light companies that you've dealt with in the past or is this something that we have to 
do our own research from scratch and figure out who does I can, where uh, I can certainly come up with a list of, uh, of companies that some outside agencies are using. Um, and so at least you have a starting point for what those companies are. Do you know if part of that data gathering is looking at public opinion regarding that? Because I, I feel that that's also a huge piece yeah. of this is I like, agree. we're six, but we're a very large community. And I can tell even within this group, there's kind of definite feelings mm -hmm. um, on both sides. So I wonder also, I think it'd be great to have kind of a pulse on what the community feels. Um, so we don't do something I, that I would I would agree 100%. I think that community engagement is very important in the recommendations that you make to Council. Um, so I would absolutely suggest that you know you seek input from those that you as a committee are representing uh, yeah. as you look at making a recommendation. I did some reading about that, and it seems that after that learning period, then the people who are stopped by red light cameras are the people who don't know they're there. So it's people who are traveling through our city to get somewhere else, not our city residents, and so other cities might be upset with us because they take a shortcut through 287 to get to their house in Gresham or whatever, and they you know, start getting speeding tickets that they weren't expecting. Um, I just appreciate the yeah. ability to try to talk my way out of a ticket. <laughs> I like the personal service. <laughs> I'm going to get a fine. And I guess I would like to know what the impact would be, depending on where they are, how that affects the traffic at um, the high school. I mean, that would be something that I would definitely want Wade to kind of weigh in. <coughs> I, would, I would just say, mm, <coughs> excuse me, um, where we were talking about 257 and all the changes, we brought up how bad it is right at the high school at that crossing. Yeah. Well, and that's why I would like Wade's opinion, because how do you think that that's going to affect the high school traffic going in and out in the buses with all the changes coming? Plus, thinking about putting a red light in. They were part of that. <laughs> oh. Sorry. I think Wade's frozen. I think he froze. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, no, he's just going. Is there a question in there? <laughs> the question is how do you think this would affect the high school traffic? Which part? <laughs> I think that's the, a very complicated intersection with people flying up and down 257th and it depends what what all they're going to do a bike lane affects things one way having a road that's not maintained is another um it's going to affect it one way or another but I'd have to see exactly what it is they're going to do before I weigh in on that one and I think the benefit of at least doing the collecting the data and doing the research on it is not necessarily whether you all decide that yes, we have to have red light cameras or we absolutely shouldn't have red light cameras, but it shows you it, it's going to give you a good insight on where problematic areas are from a traffic perspective or from a traffic safety perspective in the city and in that. As you look at that, you might find other alternatives to red light cameras as well. So, um, you know, <clears throat> traffic safety uh, is is a challenge statewide, mm -hmm. and and we have seen an increase in fatalities that are traffic related across the state, partic and particularly throughout Multnomah County. Um, we've been very fortunate. Come word in Troutdale that we haven't had a substantial increase in fatalities, but you know I think it would be good to have the data to find out if that's uh, supported by the fact that the roadways are good or the traffic control devices are good or maybe the city's just been lucky. Um, so I think that that was the ultimate goal and. Mr. Young came in there was not so much for you all to decide that yes, we have to have them, but it was just for you all to collect the data. That way, when the council comes asking about what you all's opinion is on cameras, you have that, you have the data to support whatever your recommendation is. Do we need to make an official request to you or 
And what would that look like? Does anybody else know what it would look like? Because I, I knew, so. So you can just ask me if there's something you want, and if I can get it for you, I'll tell you I can. If I can't, I'll tell you I can't. So. Um, How far back can you go? As far as what? Uh, traffic accidents. Um, Probably as long as back as uh, as this system and Troutdale was uh, contract city for the sheriff's office. So, well, I mean, for me, it's like it would make sense to make comparisons between a couple of years if sure, possible. Sure. But I mean, we might want more current data in some because a few years back could be less people out because of you know. Oh, yeah, COVID. yeah so absolutely. It might not, even though there were crazies then, but yeah. I mean, I feel like, again, I still lean toward 257th is getting modified and I agree. we can find out information, but it's going to change. It's going to be kind of. Well, and honestly, I think that, that you know, um, that ultimately that may be your guys' recommendation that you don't have believe that further action is necessary on that right now or because of these changes i think the key thing is that um y'all are just prepared to make that recommendation because um, i have a feeling that council may at some point ask for a recommendation from you guys and that's really what the committee is here for is to make those recommendations to the council about things impacting public safety so um, it might be good to just have a recommendation. Where would that be that, hey, we can't make a recommendation right now because there's too many changes coming up to to the road. So it doesn't make sense for us to make a re recommendation about something that may change in a year. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that is probably the key element is just being able to make a recommendation. If I remember correctly, when they were talking about the a street improvement project and they presented to the CAC, wasn't it from just start to kind of the high school area? So the big hill down was not part of that modification? Further so down. But it goes way. to Cherry Park. Well, but it's not down to here. Cherry but Park not all the way down. Yeah. Um, not all the way down. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's, so we have that big kind of place where people speed down the hill. So it may be interesting just to see if we could get kind of a heat map of that, um, just to, you know, to inform us more of like the accidents in the Troutville area. I'm feeling just to better understand and and maybe we do just take a look at that and be like, oh, interesting. And then we can look at it again in a while um, to okay, see. But so in what you're talking about, are you talking about um, month at my month, you're talking about for the past year, like what are we, what kind of data are we actually going to look at? And then how, what are we comparing it to, to even realize? Right. You know, I think like, this would just be like a starting point so that we can, can monitor. So we have like some place to start because when I look at these, I, I, it's hard for me to find a trend. Um, mm -hmm. But if we could like right. just have a heat map and somehow i mean looking at the data that gresham had that's pretty cool i know that's not our system but if we could have some rudimentary way of just being... well and we do have a crime map on on the county's website which you can refer to but many times traffic crashes aren't necessarily crimes so right. it wouldn't necessarily oh, okay. be represented there um so if you wanted like something similar in for specific you know maybe a specific area and traffic crashes were the specific data you wanted like i can certainly reach out to our stats folks and say hey can you create me this i mean they're wizards they can probably make anything i ask them to but um i can certainly get that for you and potentially that might be something that we could include in this packet so because if and this kind of goes back to a conversation we had many months ago, which is like, we really need to evaluate the packet to make sure that it's giving you all information right. that's right. pertinent to what yeah. you're trying to accomplish. And so if that list, which I'm terrible with lists, I like maps and graphs much more than just lists of things. But if that list is not impactful for you guys or not helpful for you guys, and there's an alternative to that that we should look at, then 
I'm happy to talk to our statistics folks and say, hey, instead of this, can you make it a heat map or something like that? So, um, you know, I'm certainly happy to do that. Like, I'm here to be a resource for you all. So, um, I just want, I just need to have direction on what is helpful for you guys and what is not helpful for you guys. Do you think it would be helpful for a red light camera company to come in and talk to us? I think that's premature. I think it's premature. I think, it's premature. Really, I think we got to figure out but some heat some map thing. from. Well, I meant it then be the ones doing the data. No. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I thought they weren't. I thought you just said you would get your. So I can provide data. you data with actual traffic accidents that, that we respond to. So if there's a call for service or a self initiated call that's related to a traffic accident, I can provide you a heat map of that. Okay. What I can't tell you, and oftentimes a red light camera company will set up similar to like the speed sensors, they'll set up something similar for um, red light running. They can tell you all the times people ran a red light and didn't cause an accident or get caught. So um, I can kind of give you one part of the picture. They can give you a part of the picture that I wouldn't have the ability to give. So they should be able to give us the universe where you're in cap we're in capture of unsuccessful attempts. Sure. Got it. And I can if that's and he's going back to give us data. They can't go back and give us data. They're going to give they you current give you, yeah. data. Right? But on your data, it's not all that we know for sure that they ran the red light. No, it's just going to be traffic crashes. So all it's going to represent is there was a crash there for some reason or another, whether um, you know speed was involved or running a red light or something like that. Um, it won't be specific enough to tell you that this crash was caused because somebody ran a light. So if I remember correctly, I don't think Ray gave us a deadline on when to no. present. So my question would be, um, when do we know more about the information on what they're doing on, on 257th and when they're starting that? I bet we, uh, Woodrow was just looking something up, but I bet we could make a request from the county um, for them to yeah, I give us I have her it. name. Her name's Sarah Hurwitz that yeah, sends out. I stuff. have her. She emails yeah. me, so yeah, um, she emails me too. And, yeah, and I just I can ask email her. the link to this um, the two hundred eighty seventh Drive Corridor Safety Improvement website. Yeah, it started in twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, it's been going. Yeah. So <laughs> Ray wanted next steps tonight. So you're going to get us some data, and I'll email. Um, Multnomah County, sure. and you don't want to do the red light camera data thing yet, or have them come talk to us. I mean, maybe that's something we should vote on. I don't. Do you think we should? I don't know. No. I, I don't know what we're discussing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not I quite sure. I'm understanding what I you're saying. I think I, I think that we're to the. I mean, we're not to the point of making a decision that we want to. Consider we have to gather some data. We have to, we, or we have to okay. analyze. Oh, we'll have we, need, to. we have some, but we need to like really try to zero in and maybe, like I said, the map versus us all individually going and trying to map this stuff out ourselves. In my experience working with contractors and yes, another industry, but um, is that once you invite them in, um, sometimes yes, um, uh, and so I. Just to me, that gives me a little heartburn of just making sure that we have the information um, before we. I, yeah, I do think. No, I'm just saying too yeah. that they've been giving us more data that yeah. we really need that probably to see if they're really running a lot them. of red lights up there. I mean, but, all of us see it. <laughs> I know, but, but, I, but they, they wouldn't be getting caught. I mean, they wouldn't, this wouldn't be it if it's Troutdale, because what I see primarily would be Gresham stuff. It just happens to be right there the way they're coming. The ones you see running. The ones yeah. I see, which is almost daily, but. 
Well, another alternative. It's the way the light signal is putting works. a speed camera on 257. Again, it's we coming. might invest in that. I mean, we might be making a recommendation for an investment. And to me, it's like they're going to be doing all of this work on 257. Yeah, but not it's at probably the, not even not at the bottom where they realize. Speed. Oh, no. But if I mean, if if we see on this hot a map that we're looking at that there's a ton of stuff going on down there at that lower part or something and I feel like we'll see about that that will drive our next decision mm -hmm. um, as opposed to up there anywhere up there because I feel like that's just going to have a ton of stuff and even the information they gather once they start the construction or the modifications or whatever they're going to do I mean okay. they're at least going to pave it Okay, so, that might make them faster to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. So our next step is um, we'll see what Montgomery County is going to do and when they're going to start, and then you'll bring us some data on. So action. just to clarify, to make sure I bring you guys the best data that you're looking for. That's what I want. Would you like this current list turned into a heat map that you for crashes? So instead of having this list of traffic accidents it would be more of a map. I'm assuming this is possible. I'm totally speaking for our staff people, so I may be making a big work for them. But is that what I'm gathering, is that this is not a good representation of where things are happening, and it would be better to have a map that showed you know, where these were at? I can speak for me and me only here. I, as I've been barely involved in this for only a few months, it seems, um, I kind of thought that one of the things we were going to work on in our community group here was sort of figuring out what we're doing, our focuses and that kind of stuff, setting our goals, so then we could figure out what we really want from you. So right now, I would say that map might be more useful to me than what this is. However, this might be super inf uh, informative to me, and I just don't know that yet. Well, there's nothing to say that like, it's nothing, like, this is just the way it's been done. So there's nothing to say that it's set in stone that, like, hey, we want this changed up, and then a few months you realize, eh, that wasn't as helpful as we thought it was. Like, let's go back to the other way or, or you know, look at <clears throat> other alternatives. This is just one way of presenting the data and this is the way we present the data to all our contract cities because this is what historically has provided the best information mm -hmm. um, but if we get to a point or the committee gets to a point where you realize that this is no longer providing you the information that you need then we need to look at how we can better provide that information to you all in a way that is helpful what about if we how do you guys feel about if um, you go to your data um, experts and see if it's a heavy lift and if it's something easy and they just have to report it and we try it for one month and take a look and if it is a heavy lift we come back and we just keep it the same and, and talk talk through it again and, and so maybe that. just try it yeah that sounds beautiful however if he's going to get us collect us information going back for us to know to inform us about you know the hot map down below or you know like whatever um that has to go back a certain amount of time too not just one month's worth but we could just start by looking at one's one's month's worth to see if it's a, ha a helpful way for us to like see what happened last month and then if that's helpful we might want to say hey maybe we take a look at a year or i don't know oh, okay okay I'm, I'm good with oh and i think the other thing is maybe we can finally figure out our metrics our dashboard and figure out what we think are the hot things and then maybe that'll help us inform what we want to get really dive into this or how to look at this data in a different way so well i think I, it's fair to say that as as the committee moves into various projects that that important data is going to frequently change and you know i'm willing to do my best to change 
what I can provide to you along with the, the you know, that, um, as long as it's within the power of our, stat, our folks that do the statistics. Um, so I think that's the key thing is like, just as you find stuff and you say, hey, this is the project we're working on and this is the data we need, then maybe that's, we make some changes to make that data fit what the project you're working on is, instead of me sitting here and talking about a bunch of stuff that may not have any impact on any project that you're working on, just because that's the way it's formatted, right? Um, I'd much rather come here and spend the same amount of time giving you information that is helpful versus giving you information that you just listen to. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else? Paul, Jeff? Wayne, any comment? No, okay. So our next step is you'll bring us um, what data you can bring us, and I'm a contact uh, Multnomah County about what they're doing on 257. So when you email, can you include us in the email? Because sometimes I feel like I felt when Chloe um, gave notice that she's no longer on our committee. I felt like there was no communication as to now what. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I just, and like, what is our process? I even emailed saying, okay, so what are the notes that, that Chloe has? Because we remember we had that one co committee where we talked about our, um, our statement. What happened to all that? I mean, I don't have it. Chloe had it. And I had asked if we could have a copy of all those notes so we can go from here. I've never gotten a response either from the city or from Chloe at all. So I have no idea what's going on with what all the work that we did. I thought we approved the yeah, mission what, statement. Yeah, but what did we ever do with it? We did, what but did I don't know it? that it I've was in the minutes. It. Unless it wasn't. I'll let me see. Okay. Um, all right, so. Okay, Victoria, can I make a request then? Uh, possibly, can you get something from uh, Sarah Hurwitz or the county somehow? Maybe it could be presented in some visual format yeah, for everybody she to might see. Come. I'm thinking December. Even if she doesn't yeah. come, or if even she can, zoom in. Yeah, or if she could just yeah show something. I I know that they had some different video things that we. I know. Doing. I know they were going to do slide, but they had a whole list. Of... Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Um, so we'll move on to um, public safety delivery working group. Who else is it? You're in it. I'm in it. You're in it. Yeah. So um, from we're still looking at. Um, let's see if I remember correctly. I was it um, it was police that we talked about last time that we met. It was fire before that, and so um, right. Yes. Right. Too many committees. <laughs> um, and so it was great to hear from previous managers of our city. It's great that um, we have Fairview that comes to our meetings, which is nice because then we know that there's like a joint, you know, we want to work together, which is really good to see. We don't see Wood Village, but we, we see Fairview and we see, you know, us there. Um, you know, contracts are coming up. I mean, it's interesting to see what prices are going up higher. And so, you know, my concern is um, what's done with the police is done. We have Multnomah County. I think trying to look at going backwards and restarting our own, I think that's going to take a lot of time. I think it's going to take more money than we are prepared to do as a city. However, fire is coming up, and I really think we really need to look at fire more than we do um, our police. And I think that we we need to look at at the contract on how long it takes to get fire here. But then at the same time, I think we we need to let the public know that when they call 911, it is not the fire station, it is not the police station, it is a whole different entity. Because, you know, we've made phone calls 
you know, from the high school and it was faster to get a parent to come than it was to get a fire station to come, right? So, yeah. so I'm looking at, you know, the high school as a whole because I work there and I have medically fragile kids, but I'm also looking at neighbors who somebody's having a heart attack and you can't get through 911. But I think our citizens need to realize it's a whole different entity and that their complaints are well heard, but they need, they really need to complain to state legislators and they need to complain to the senators and they need to complain that that 911 is not working. I mean, you can be on hold for a good seven minutes before you get a, a person to answer. And so- I'm wrong, but I thought 911 is the city of Portland. It is the city of Portland. It is the city of Portland. So I don't know if the state legislation would Well, but it would be good for them to hear the complaints that we're having and the problems that we're having with with the 911 as a whole. Well, we pay them too. And so I think we should use our wallet. There does need to be some accountability, right? Because when you talk about five minutes, seven mm -hmm. minutes, I mean, with health mm -hmm. outcomes, that is a huge amount of time if you're waiting on a defibrillator or something like that in the community. Well, and again, sorry to keep interrupting, but our conversation about red light cameras there are options to include emergency switching in red light cameras. Mm -hmm. So when a police car or fire truck or ambulance is coming up to that camera, a monitored intersection, it'll switch the lights. It's, yeah, it's they, been proven to yeah. increase response time by up to 50 they have them. But I think the, the time is, it's not the response time that it's we're finding. The phone call it's, it's the, the dispatch time. It's the yeah. dispatch. Yes to get to the dispatcher. Um, and it's, a, I think like she was saying, it's not well known within our community that these are separate entities and, and one impacts the outcome and the abilities of the, and, the other. Yeah. And there's nothing right now that we can, um, from what I was told, that we can do about that. So we're working on the police and fire. Mm -hmm. And some of our options on fire was to go with District 10, and they would probably lease it out to Gresham, but it would be a little bit, um, maybe be less um, expensive for us. But the other, um, the main thing is we would have a say. We have no say in Gresham Fire right now. If we went with, and we'd have to put it to a vote. If we went with District 10, we have board member, a board member on their board. So that was one option with fire. Um, the funny <laughs> option with police was um, Multnomah County has the service anyway. So we just wouldn't have our contract, but that doesn't really cover us that well. Um, and technically, by statute, we're only required to service unincorporated areas of the county. So realistically, to take advantage of that, the city would have to unincorporate. Um, and I don't anticipate that happening. Uh -huh. So We might not be able to just deal. <laughs> um, anyhow, so um, as Carol said, I, I think right now the police, it'd be hard, um, even for Fairview, Wood Village, and Trout to start a police force up right now. It'd be hard to get it done within the next two years. But the fire is something we should look at. Yeah. So our last meeting, supposedly, next week. is next week. The last one for your group? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're making how are you guys supposed to accomplish this then if it's your we last have meeting? to get an extend uh, an extension. Extension yeah. from city council to meet for more meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so seems like you guys' job should be till you finish the work. And it has to have a deadline of when this absolutely has to be decided. And the document is provided. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do think we are. I mean, I think we're just trying to not get through everything, but form some kind of ideas and pockets to bring back to council. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't want to interrupt, but I wanted to add one thing when you're done before we move to the just about the the discussion with them. I didn't know if you had more. To oh, add. I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I was just going to add the other idea that came up that I thought was very interesting was um, I think part of the struggle is like with our contracts, right? How do we have local influence and say um, around some of those things because not having your own police force and working with so many cities, um, sometimes your voice isn't as loud. One of the interesting concepts I thought around how we can help fix some of the smaller problems that seem to affect our community was perhaps using the addition of another code enforcer to look at some of our community problems that people like call in. And, you know, so instead of tying perhaps a deputy up with, you know, neighbors fighting over who's going to pick up the garbage cans, um, that they would, um, having more resource around that could help enforce some of those city codes that we have that impact the, um, the community members. So I thought that was different. And then we also talked about the, the police officer that stays at the beach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that they stay there like hours and hours and hours when they really could be doing some other things as well and not be there so many hours, but I don't yeah. remember how many, do you remember the contract hours over there? Was it nine? Yeah, so 950 yeah. throughout the, the summer months is what's required. Um, we reimagined that um, this year and looked because initially that 950 hours was specific to time at Glen Auto. Mm -hmm. And I think both uh, Ray Young and, and I both realized that that wasn't an efficient use of Right. services mm -hmm. so we reimagined that and we wrote a um, MOU to the contract that made that a summer community resource deputy position so that meant that that 950 hours included any work they did in Troutdale instead of saying you only get credit for that time you're down at the beach it was you get credit for whether you're working traffic safety or responding to a call in Troutdale um, because we all know that realistically, we don't get a ton of days that people are going to be spending at the river, even in our best months here. So it didn't make sense to continue to mm -hmm. have somebody down there. And, and you're right, absolutely just sitting there. It wasn't good for uh, the community. It wasn't good for our deputies. It, it, I kind of liked having the sheriff's truck right in front of my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> and we, but, we discussed too having another community officer, but it's pretty, <laughs> it's like 250,000. Um, but that was another option because we talked a lot about, um, we don't see the officers in our neighborhoods anymore. Um, yeah. You used to see them patrol yeah. your neighborhood and yeah. things like that. Well, then that's that's a different metric, and I'm not sure if it was one in their contract. But uh, you know, how many officers live within the jurisdiction of Trout Hill? Are they bringing their cruisers home? Are you know how many? I mean, are, this is, is this their home? Are they police their home? Uh, I don't. I don't think that was something that was in, in the original contract. But that's Wait, a, you... that is that is a measure of the community involvement. But that was what happened, you know, 20, whatever, not even that many years ago when we had Troutdale Police. They just drove through the neighborhood. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yeah. You could just wave at your local police officer as yeah, you and, pulled on through. And the other thing we talked, because we knew everybody, um, we yeah. knew the police officers. I mean, when my daughter was at Reynolds, all the kids knew every police officer's name for one reason or another. <laughs> well, keep in mind that, you know, I started at Fairview almost 24 years ago now as a Fairview police officer, and I didn't go to near as many calls 24 years ago as That's our true. Mm -hmm. now. That's so, true. you know, there has been a, and particularly since COVID, yeah. There has been a substantial increase in calls for service. So, um, you know, deputies are getting pulled away much more free. They don't have the free time that we once had to just drive around and do those community contacts. So um, there is a lot of metrics that 
that you have to look at when you evaluate, you know, how, how often are our deputies in our community. And, you know, we do have the ability to provide GPS data to tell you how often there's police officers in Troutdale. So we could say every time that a police car is in Troutdale, how many police cars do you have in Troutdale at any given time? And we can provide that data. Now, I can't tell you how often a police car drives in front of your house, um, but looking at that data and comparing that to the increased call load, you might have a better representation of what of that level of service. And I think that speaks to kind of what we're moving into next, and that is that um, how do we create healthier, safer communities? Because that doesn't mean that that, that means we have the decrease in crime naturally, right? And then um, so, but with resources and where we are, we are not at that point. So, and who knows, on our committee? I'm sorry, I think there's a question outside of your committee. I'm not allowed, yeah. Nobody can hear my I'm sitting on my hands and feet. Go ahead. A lot of the, in the, in the newspapers lately have been, you know, big businesses closing due to organized crime and things like this, shoplifting and whatnot. Have you heard anything from the outlet malls? I guess then that's the only place I could think of that dropped out that would possibly be impacted by. You know, an organized shoplifting area. Well, the, the Safeway could be up there. They could be They're organized, you know, get buying, a, I mean, taking a bunch of groceries. Have you been and, called anything like that? So we have shoplifting occur at all, I mean, any place that has stuff to purchase yeah. and yeah. ability to shoplift, we have shoplifting occur. Um, we are working on uh, doing some retail theft specific missions to start to address shoplifting but as you mentioned that's just a not only countywide but statewide epidemic with the increase in shoplifting um, so i can't say that i've seen an increase that um out here that is mind-blowing but i think it's something that like all things we have to stay on top of it because we don't want to see an increase that's extraordinary. Um, so, you know, that is one of our focuses is continuing to try and stay ahead of crime trends before we recognize them or before we realize them out here. See, so looking at what was happening in Portland and saying, hey, we need to start addressing that now before it does start happening out there. So, we do kind of have the advantage of having Portland be the Hub of where seems up, things seem to always kind of start and come out of, so we can use that and go. Well, if that's happening there. We need to look at how we can prevent that here. So, you know, using that kind of focus and you know that kind of proactive level of policing is how we try to prevent those things. So. Okay, um, let's move on to choosing our goals from the list. Any thought on how we want to do this? I don't see them numbered or. Do we pick Have our we top ever... three or two? I can't remember what we we're supposed to. I don't know. Did I... we ever figure out if we can get anything more for on fire and medical? Any statistics, any metrics? Have we figured we out? We got them before, so I think it's just. We did? Yeah, we oh, had yeah. fire come a few times in fire. the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. And did we talk about fire coming back, asking them to come Yeah, back? I'm just not sure that we made the connection with who we're supposed to. Well, we should take we a had few. Um, I'm going to ask Ray about the timeline for the red light camera, too. What do you mind? I, um, if I could say one of my things that I think would be number one is getting feedback from community. Yeah. Because um, I, I think that, that would be excellent to have 
I don't want to do a survey though. That's six time. Can we? Uh, and they don't answer. Just, they don't answer. They surveys. don't answer anyhow. So no. we're just going to have to do all of us a better job of talking to our community. Or how do we find the only thing I can think of is like doing a Friday. You know, first Friday where we go down. Yeah, you know, we have a little thing down there and we try to talk to try people. to talk to community as they come by. And I mean, because they don't respond to survey. And I don't know about you, but I'm not knocking on doors. I'm just not doing it. Um, it's too cold. Right? Well, and, I mean, and I've so, done it, but it's hard. <laughs> it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard to go door knocking. I've done it. I've done it for too many years. And so, um, you know, I think maybe a few of us need to maybe get together and, and present on a Friday night down here downtown yeah I, right now uh, if you're talking too cold to knock on doors where what are we doing first down Fridays down are done right well, now. oh they're no they go they go indoors they no go, they go indoors but it's just uh, you gotta yeah, get somebody yeah. where you can go in yeah. inside their place. I I'm thinking it's a ways out but we can do it on our self safety and health night yeah because I think this if we did something like that and even had like a a table a safety and health mm -hmm. night we could also incorporate the yeah, number because you're one. relying on people knowing that there's a safety and, and health night <laughs> and number four but i do think like those are well it i mean we'd have to look at but i've seen them well done yeah. right when you ask have the wheels and we have it something. in the summer yeah. and but that would be a long time that we have to wait to get no, this you're gonna have to wait because well, I don't know where I'm, uh, on during the Friday holiday. we're going to set up. But they do open up on some of the, the in the empty spaces downtown. Yeah. Um, and those are warm and comfy. Yes, they are. Yeah. The problem with First Friday is you have a lot of people that are not from Trotsdale. I think we could, when I've done the surveys before to get my free water bottle, they ask, are you a Trotsdale resident? Are you not? And then like, they have the questions that are trout to rate related. And then if you weren't, they just like, did you enjoy the event? Yes, you know what I mean? So I don't can, know if we could have- Can we, I mean- um, I still think you're only, if you're lucky, you won't even get a hundred I, I on first Friday. I think you mentioned, Twyla, that you're impressed with the presence on your Facebook page from the sheriff's department yes my my children would want you to know that facebook is for old people so it was instagram <laughs> i know but so what i'm just saying yes. is there's got to be a way to get a few things out in another capacity about participating in some things yeah yeah no i think you're, you're right that creativity you know the dog park open and we could have had some feedback from crowddale residents at the dog park opening Yes. So, but I that mean, was pretty well advertised because I mean it was in the Champion, it was online, it was it, it was on um, Facebook. I mean, it was out there. Sorry. No worries. No, I was gonna say, but that's what I mean is those things. So yeah. if we put some stuff and got it out there, I mean the idea when we say things, even for people coming and participating, and it's in the Champion. Well, they have to look up what our agenda is. It's like city council posts their agenda the Thursday before their Tuesday meeting. That doesn't give anyone very much time for an agenda item to have a, a, a capability of coming and speaking. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we eliminate or we want to, and no offense, but I guess I'm in the, the world of education where we can't say no. We just have to find another way. So like the brainstorming idea is never to put down the something, but maybe it morphs into something better in another capacity. I just think that we just can't take no okay. on people participating. I, I, we have I, to I've been people. on this committee since I think 2006. I have participated in so many surveys and they, they don't happen. The best one we ever had was when you did get the free stuff and it was at a big event. And well, well sure. Multnomah County, when they wanted people to come for their do their survey for 257th, you were entered into a drawing for some gift certificate of some form or something well, like that. 257th, we didn't have that many people. Oh, I'm not talking about the walking along oh. or whatever. I'm talking about 
participating in the actual survey online to fill in oh. for oh, yeah. what they want. Yeah. They were going to give away something. And, so and then with the online surveys, especially if you're giving away something, a lot of times people enter them more than once, so you have to have security on there and all this because they're going to change just, names, yeah. change emails. You know, I think if we, if we take a step back, okay, and let's understand what, what are the questions we want to ask the community. And once we, once we understand what that is, we can talk to our neighbors if we like our neighbors. Yeah. Talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, every time I go into Bandits or Lolo's, I can ask the people there and just keep a running tally. I mean, it's, um, I guess, I think let's, let's get the question, you know, what do we want to ask? And even before that, what responses are we really looking to receive, right? And then we can figure out the method to how we're going to try and figure all that stuff out. Surveys, it depends. All I was saying um, was, is one of the goals I'd like to see us have is get feedback from the community. That's a huge one. And I think that when I looked at the goals, when I borrowed your pen, right, is I, I put numbers next to all of them. It, we can lump a lot of these together. There's a lot of these that are really, that can be clubbed together in different ways. Um, a couple, a couple of them, are, you know, has Ray. So let's put, let's make that a Ray goal. So, yeah. You know, how we want to help manage Ray or allow, allow us to help Ray. Um, and then community factors, I mean, that's a, maybe we, we split up our goals into what are goals about management of the city, what are goals about the city, community population, um, and then there's some very specific ones that uh, we can throw out there as well, just because, you know, the 911 data about response and, and uh, increasing the callback and hold time. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering um, for process if we should just go around and each say our top two so we can kind of figure out if we're even in the same goal areas. Okay. I'm thinking if we do have that, and it won't be on National Night Out because the police are too busy that night. Um, you think summer's far away, it's not that far away. You know, it's like six meetings and it's here, you know, seven meetings. And we have to get our questions together. We can have all sorts of booths there. We can have, um, if they want to have a neighborhood watch, things like that, and have it all set up. And, and we can have our little survey right there. And they just go better at a big event. They really do. That's the only ones I've ever seen that we've done really well at. Um, and you'll get lots, of, believe me, you'll get, especially when it's a health and safety night, you'll get lots of feedback that night. So we can just be at, uh, maybe have two moves. Because I was thinking we could have it up in Columbia Park, maybe. We could have like a booth at the beginning and a booth at the end. So if they missed us at the beginning. But I find that really gets back our community service. Okay, so do you want us to go around and say what we our goals are? Well, Everybody's going to just pick what they told. Not necessarily. Yeah. Anyway, I'm thinking that can be lumped in. No. Nope. As, nope. as, nope. as nope. you, Woodrow, or Woody? Woodrow. 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 I was, uh, if Grandpa was Big Woody. I mean, so um, I didn't like. As Woodrow said, we can put a lot of these things together. Yeah. So I'm thinking. That one will get lots of community response. Like the first three, learn from community what factors yeah. are, and then looking at protective factors in the community, assessing community as a whole. That's really 
part of the survey. Um, the third one is more of the you know, questions of, from our service providers. Four is the survey, getting feedback from our community. Six is data from contract. Seven, you know, data from a service provider. Um, eight really is talk to Ray about emergency management, which is like the last, uh, second to last and third to last. Um, traffic safety, awesome. Safety, safety and health plan. Sounds like we combine that with the survey. Um, and then we got reach out to Ray and City Council to get input on drop up desire for the committee. That kind of ties back in. What is, what's Ray's perception of what the community wants? Yeah, we could have Ray come and he could talk about that and the emergency plan one night. So, you know, I think part of that came from, there was a little bit of a sliver of discussion about, you know, what does Ray want to publish about public safety? You know, is there something that the city council and the, and the city manager want? What do they want to publish about public safety in the state of Troutdale? And what do they want to talk about? And how can how do our efforts align with that as well? So, and do we have do we have the right metrics? You know, when they talk about all the awesome reasons why a business should relocate to Troutdale, do we have those metrics in place to provide that to somebody? This is why we want you to relocate your art gallery to downtown. So. And I do want, just want to add, because I think number two was not survey related, That I think that one was mine. That was looking at the literature around what creates safer communities, um, like ensuring... Oh, definition of safety, is that what you're talking about? No, no, it was just looking at, because the research that's out there and applying that to what we have within Troutdale to see are there areas within our own community that we need to be focusing in on. So looking at things of like access to healthcare or um, do we have areas that, um, you know, are underutilized and abandoned, you know, so some of those markers that are indicative of creating that opportunity for um, lack of safety. So I don't, so it was more of an assessment kind of at a different level, not of like community members perception, That's but true. some of that other stuff. So our dashboard that we're talking about trying to, we had to, it was going to be published on the page. And that is something that Ray was going to tell us whether we I, could I have no do idea. it or not. I, I, oh, okay. I never All of a sudden I thought, wait a second, I thought we were what we needed that to was assess. Slurry. I, I but never then, understood what she had planned to do with that. Okay. I, uh, okay. So it would, I didn't know, I, you're right. When we talked about the dashboard, I kind of thought it might be something that would be published as soon as, you know, the next month's data could get uploaded and we would be able to see statistics, I mean, you know, see stuff. But, but uh, you're right. You, but what I do mean, you want to see? Yeah, no, but that's just it. We, I think that that's where we had to decide what were the things we want, hot button issues. Like, okay, you know, look at, uh, we want to be able to see that there's been, um, you know, certain kinds of crime. Oh, look at how many break-ins, burglaries, thefts have happened in our, but but again, we have to, but yeah, stop you, signs. Are, I don't do know. Do you publish so. that on Multnomah County? Yeah, so we yeah. have our county, uh, Multnomah County heat map, which you can actually break down by city. And you can see anything that we responded to that was crime related in the crime, city. Crime, not accident. Oh, you said earlier, right? Crime. It's, yeah, it has to be related to a crime. Okay. So if an accident was a criminal related crime, you know, like a stolen vehicle gets in a crash, you might see that. But okay. if it's just uh, two people at a fender bender, you're not going to see that. So, um, you know, when you look at, I think when you look at what a dashboard looks like, maybe there's things where and a, where are you going to publish it and how are you going to do so like not pre recreate the wheel on things that already exist yeah, and right. try to use some existing resources um, um at, at like maybe having a link yeah. on to that crime dashboard where people okay. can more easily access it so and you know, instead of having to go to Multnomah County's website, they can go to the city's website or whatever and have access to that through there. Yeah, it would um, automatically zero in on ours. Right. Yeah, yeah, would have some. Right. Okay, I, I need to go look at Multnomah County. Yeah, I, I think that. And then that would kind of give us, maybe that would actually help us 
to figure out the met. I mean, then maybe we've got it. Maybe we've got it already. So yeah, it might be interesting. Um, look at that next time to see if that's something Alan you're Alan. able to navigate us through. I have it pulled up, and I'm just not really able to drill down to. Um, so if the committee were to to make a request, I can certainly bring our like one of our staff folks here who could maybe present on what data, you know, an expert kind of overview of what data is available and how to best access it and things like that and kind of make you all experts in that so you can share it with the community at large. Well, I, I, like, I really like that. that. Yeah. I really like that. That would be great. Can you see can we maybe? make that request? <laughs> yes. I'm writing it down in my notes here. See process. I'm guessing it will be after the new year. Um, I'll, I can check in and find out okay. and I can email you and let you know like what the timeline is for it but um, you know, it may be possible to be as early as next month if that's what, uh, what the committee would like um, okay. but I can certainly send you some availability dates based on the committee's meeting times okay. and let you know. Does, there, does everybody, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious. By the time we get the safety and health night and all the questions we want for community, it's going to be here before we know it. So I'm thinking that's when we really get our community feedback. I mean, you're not going to do anything in the winter anyway. Okay, I'm just going to interject here something. When you want to make um, decisions or when we're trying to give feedback to Ray even on red light cameras, I'd like to have community feedback before I make a recommendation too. So it's I'm not just sitting on my own laurels. But we can't have a survey for everything. I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't have to be, but I feel like when you can ask your neighborhood and then bring it back. We all live in different neighborhoods. I have asked some people in my neighborhood and they're all totally anti, but again, and, that might be the fine. little area I live in, so. And, and that's fine. I mean, that's, uh, when you're dealing with these, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you people. What about um, if we, because I feel like the hardest part of this will be the lift of creating meaningful questions. Sure. Um, and so maybe that's our first step is let's yes. create our meaningful questions and then we see where we are. And if we are two weeks from now, then we, we look at like, I one voice is better than an, an echo chamber. So even if it's a very small sample, it'd be wonderful. And then at least we have something to base off of like, how do we get more people? Um, so those are just my thoughts of like, we'll break it down and then eventually we'll be there. So, so okay. I was gonna say, so, so it, that doesn't hurt to do it now on a small scale. The, the questions, asking our neighbors, getting some kind of feedback if we have to make some decision, and still proceeding with doing, getting some more feedback, yeah. maybe from a bigger swath of people. Yeah. And a safe, your questions as we go along. Can, and maybe, yeah. maybe that so works. So if we're doing our neighborhoods, that's easy. But if we're going to do a survey or anything like that, it's going to take a few months because we have to go through all the things. We can't just Next month we have a survey. It no, doesn't work. I completely agree. And when I'm saying that, I'm using that word survey in a loose term, not like anything formal. I mean more so, I think we need to get some input from our community greater than what we obviously don't get much in the way of any participation. And so to me, it's like, I do feel like there should be more people engaged. I mean, yeah. But, if, if I, could. I, I don't mean to be negative, but it's been this way forever. And we're going to change it. We're Victoria, changing it. We're going to change it. Um, <laughs> if, so. I, if I could share just a, like, just some insight. It being, I've held numerous community listening sessions about a ton of different issues. And, you know, one of the things I found is that 
you are if you are able to answer people's questions because you haven't done the research on your own then it's a very short conversation right mm -hmm. and so if if you have a list of questions but you can't answer any of their questions back to clarify anything then i don't know that you're going to get a lot of you're not going to get valuable because it's it's just all best guess right and so you know if before i would have pulled a listening session i'd make sure that i'd at least done the research to be able to answer some of those questions you know you're gonna get like when you get questions about like well why do why would we even need one is there a place that's dangerous like and if you're not able to say and answer well i'm not really sure then i don't know that you're going to get valuable feedback from whatever questions you ask i think you have to have at least enough um, research to be able to answer some of their questions back to have some legitimacy to your questions so, so then, <laughs> uh, I would recommend that we, as a whole, think of the questions that we want to ask the community and to come back at next month and to bring our questions. And then we could narrow our questions down because, you know, maybe we wait until the spring, but, you know, I think that we need to use as many media as we can you know if it's talking to our neighbors if it is waiting till the spring if it is having a little booth on a friday night i mean it doesn't take that much but advertising, but have, it, advertising it there right and then putting it in the champion just so we can at least try and start from somewhere but yet do our bring our questions back and then and and then answering our questions, like you said, and then get more information and then have a booth. It's not, it doesn't take that much to man a booth. I'll go down there. I've done it before. You know, we just we need to start somewhere. And I guess I'm I'm a little frustrated on the goal thing. I know that we can we can um, put it under certain categories and group them together, but my understanding is that we were supposed to come and we were supposed to choose the two goals that we wanted to work on personally in our in our committee was am i wrong on that personal that was my on understanding our goals. that's what i thought that we were supposed to do you mean each of us work on a different goal no <laughs> we were personal. supposed to look at these goals and choose the top two that um and that's what we, we were wanted. saying. We can combine so many of these. I wonder if it makes the buckets too big, though. Well, I was going to suggest what Carol suggests. Let's our homework come back with some questions. We can decide how and when we're going to do it next meeting on that. Because everybody seems like community feedback is one we should do, right? Yeah, and I, I think um, any questions you come up with, even if they're not related to the red light camera. No, right. I feel right. like in anything and everything, about... the reason it gets under my craw is because even being on parks and then knowing other stuff, it's like things are happening in our city that I don't know about. And short of trying to peruse the website every day, which I don't have time for, there's just like a way that I'd like to know more. And I feel like if I feel that way, other people have to feel that way too. So I don't know, just. Well, and, and you know, I was the one that brought up the issue about CERT training and about management training. Sure. I would like to know, we've had it before. I was part of that when I lived in Washington State 20 years ago. Yeah. I want to know if we have a major disaster in the in the city of Troutdale, who is our go to? We're not going to be able to be protected by everybody. Cops are going to be all over the place. Our fire is going to be everywhere. We need neighborhoods to be trained. Somebody in our neighborhoods are. And, and, and so if we're going to do that, 
And that's What's, why. Where's that information? That's why I suggested we have Ray come and talk because they are working on that emergency plan right now. Oh, I just have a fabulous. Well, and then we can suggest that be added. Maybe this is a fabulous idea, but wouldn't that be a great place to ask other questions at a cert training and like awareness in That's our community correct. come and and learn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of my top ones. Also rated was like the emergency management piece. Mm -hmm. Also, so. That ties into so much. Well, and my question too, because we have, you know, of course, we have Troutdale Elementary, we've got Sweetbriar, and we have we have the high school in the city of Troutdale. Is that the only? Those are the only three, right? Am I missing another one? Is there, Do you say Walt Morey? Walt Morey. Oh, Walt Morey. Okay, so we have four schools. So then, are any of those a touch point? I mean, I think that'd be good to know for safety wise. If we have a major disaster, are those places that we that our community goes to? Is that some? I, I mean, I would like to know. I think I'm sure a lot of community members would want to know what would happen. Okay. So maybe having Ray come and explain a little bit more of what that looks like. Where do people go? How do you know? I think that's. I mean, that's part of our safety committee, I think, and I think that we need to know what we're doing. But, and then if we could tie that on to, I don't know if that works, but if we tie it on to something like a, a CERT training for community That's members, and maybe Reynolds that. could come into play here where we could utilize some of their facilities. And have the training there and ask questions. Yes. That's what I said. We'll ask for him when he comes, if we can incorporate that. Yeah. Because they are working on it now. It's a um, what village for you and travel. So, so um, and I'll get the timeline on the red light camera because that's a request from the city. Um, I don't know if 911 would come and answer questions. I can probably get fired. I can come and talk. Yeah, we find the right people. They would come answer questions. If you want Boic to come and be able to answer questions, that can certainly be coordinated. Um, their director, I know, has been to other cities to answer probably very similar questions to the ones you all have about, you know, timelines and why it's taking so long to to get answers and things like that. So. Um, yeah, I think you would certainly oh, go well within reason to ask them to come. And mm -hmm. I would just kind of have an outline of what you might want to know from them so they can at least be prepared to have some kind of presentation for you. Um, but yeah, I think they could certainly come. Would this be somewhere where the citizen so they blew up his mailbox and was told that the detective on vacation for a week and then come out and talk to him when he's back? So, um, we're running low on time. So, we'll do community feedback questions. We'll all work on that. And, and types of responses. And then. Not just your question is like, what do you want in return? Like a scale of one to, one to 10, or do you want a narrative? Think about what the, what the response should be. And then we'll talk about places um, we can get the feedback. If somebody wants to do first Friday, if we can find a spot. Hey, um, maybe on those questions, if you guys are thinking about it, maybe also since the chief brought up about if, what would you call it, BOIC? Oh, yes, the Bureau if, of Emergency Communications, they manage 911 and non emergency. Yeah. So if they were coming, maybe some questions or the information, be thinking about that too, maybe, and jotting that information down. Well, I think yeah. we have to add, it's best if we provide, provide it ahead of time when we ask them, like what we're kind of looking so they No, can but I mean, like their... if we get together next time, that when we come together, we say some ideas so that then he'll. The next time after yeah. that. Yeah, okay. They're down on the list. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It'll I be a few months before they come, so we'll have plenty of time for. Um, then, probably January, I'll see if Ray can come. 
If he can come in December, that's fine. Did, well, did we try and get Ray to come to Citizens Advisory? Or was it somebody else? We no, trying? yeah, you're correct. Yeah, we were. He couldn't come last month. Yeah, no, he might be coming next month. Yeah, he's coming next month. Yeah. I might not want to get you. I know. I might have to. Um, so then we can um, ask him what his desires are for the committee. We can talk to him about the cert, and he can share what he knows about the emergency plan that they're working on. That takes three of them out. So, what are we doing next month? Next month, we are getting data about the red light camera. I'm going to find out what's going on 257. We're going to do our community feedback questions and how we want them to respond. And I will ask Ray if he wants to come at night. December's hard. Um, I Maybe can that's... ask Ray if he can, I can ask Fire. And then so, that will be plenty. What about EMR? AMR? Yeah. EMT? Oh, and OP. AMR? Yeah, that's uh, ambulance. AMR. I know. You want to ask them for their report? Yeah. You want to ask him? I'll ask him. Okay, are we putting too many things on the agenda? I, I'm feeling really, really overwhelmed. Okay. The, okay. So, um, fire 911 and AMR are out. Ray and emergency and all the cert and all that are. Next. Next month is community feedback. I'll find out 257 and we'll get data from Montgomery County Sheriff about um, accidents. Okay. Oh, if they're able to come, he said the dates that show the demo of the heat map, right? That's what you were talking he, about. Okay. You're just going to bring the information. Yeah, right? I'll just bring the heat. He's I'll just, just make the heat map part of the um, his presentation. The documentation there. Okay. Um, if I will try to see if we can get our um, computer um, statistics gurus to come and do that presentation, but I won't link that until I have a chance to talk to them. So I'll email the chair and let the chair know what okay. dates I can do that. Okay, so that would be our guest speaker if he can do that. If not, I'll ask Ray. Okay. But we still can't get, I feel like we, don't we want to be able to get fire in? We still yeah, need fire but we, I can't, we can't do them all in one night. Well, no, but we keep, you say, you keep saying things that are out. What, is, what do you mean I, by I mean, out? I don't understand out. You'll ask them and then they'll get back to you and give you some dates yeah. and we'll schedule. Yeah. I I'm you asked for next month. So I'm fire 911 AMR. They can be other months, but they're not next month. So if, maybe February, March, April, January, you know. I have sooner to, rather than later, because we keep asking and talking about that month after month and we're not making any But progress. we can't have that many guest speakers in one night. No, but we have been asking for AMR and fire for what? Since we started. Like I, six months. I'm not confident that the ask went out at all. Yeah. That's so I think just we talked it. about it, but I don't think we I don't think we know who to ask. So yeah. the question is, um, Chief, who do who you know? is responsible? Is it the chair responsible to reach out to all these agencies yes. to bring somebody? Mm -hmm. Or is it, do we reach out to Ray or do we reach out to you and have you? So I would say some combination of that. I think predominantly it would be the chair and or the chair's designee. So the chair may designate somebody to reach out to a particular individual and invite them. Um, when it comes to like things like if you need contact information, like I can try to provide that. For you all. For example, I'm going to make sure to email the chair with a contact for Bullock so you know who to reach out to. Okay. Um, I'm sure the city could provide a contact for who their fire contact is and things like that. But I think once you've got those contacts, then 
ultimately the chair could designate somebody to be that person to reach out to that individual. Um, if it was somebody that maybe the sheriff's office has a close relationship with, then you know, we can try to assist in, in getting that. Or if you have trouble getting in contact with somebody, I'm happy to assist in that. But ultimately, I think it would really be incumbent upon the chair and the chair's designee to make those uh, and coordinate those because you all are going to best coordinate when it mm -hmm. fits your meeting mm -hmm. schedule anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I will get the BOEC information. If you find other places that you need contact people for, please, the chair can email me and let me know and I'll try and get those as well. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I think that would be the most efficient way and it will get scheduled when you all want it scheduled versus my guesswork on when you want it scheduled. <laughs> and I'm wondering, at least for when we reach out to the um, fire department, um, because in the very beginning, they did come in a regular cadence and provided regular like packets similar to this around their data. So I wonder if we just put that into the, an ongoing request of maybe they come and talk us through, but could we get ongoing statistics yeah. from them? Mm -hmm. and Victoria, if I can be your backup for your okay. developers on that. All right, That's so awesome. we'll go through it one more time. Um, so next month, it's pretty much, we'll do their public comment We'll approve our minutes, we'll have our law enforcement report, and on top of our law enforcement report, we'll have some data um, and the heat map. And after that, if we can get the computer person here, we'll have a presentation. Okay. Um, we'll discuss the red light camera briefly. And I'll tell you Ray's timeline on that. And we'll have our update on our safety group if we're extended or if we recommended. And then um, we'll go on to the gold part, community feedback questions and how we want them to respond. And then we'll confirm the next day. So I'll see about getting Ray in January because that's a pretty full load. So I'm sorry. If the computer guy can't come, I'll see if Ray will come in December. And, and you included in there just like a little bit of information we would get on what's going on on 257th for us all to understand for yes. that. Okay, <laughs> that'd be great. And I did, I did this fast. <laughs> I emailed the, the, the group here, the link in Multnomah County that has the information about the 257, and there's a little oh. blurb at the bottom where you put in your email and get to sign up for more info. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good idea. We all jumped in on that and got to figure out what they're trying to do. I get information from her because I participated in some of the stuff you're, for it you're, already. You're a good citizen. Okay. Next meeting, December, I hope, <laughs> cross your fingers, <laughs> they don't change it. Um, December 7th at 6.30. Yep. yep. I'm in favor. A Thursday? Is okay. that right? Huh? It's yeah. a Thursday, I'm okay. Familiar. I'm not sure I can do December 7th or Thursday. Did you say 6.30? Yeah. I already got it in there. And comments. Great meeting, everybody. Uh, I just want to bring up thank you. Uh, I think we would keep talking about getting a notebook for us. Yes. Oh, I, I will ask. Okay. That would be excellent. I'm having a hard time fitting it in the folder anymore. <laughs> okay. Great meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to steal the pen. Please mark down that I was here. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm secretary um, tonight, too. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought it was a good meeting. Um, I would caution the committee that we really get fire and AMR and um, them here as soon as we can, because we've been talking about that for months. Do you want them before Ray or after Ray? <laughs> we um, just ask and see what we can do. I would just ask and see what their schedule is. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, we, because we've been asking for fire for a very long okay. time. And thank you for your input, Moses. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Good meeting. Um, I actually think I figured out this map. I don't know if we okay. need, do you know what district we are? That's the only piece yeah, we need. So we'd be 60 and 70. 60 and 70? So okay. 60 is the north side of, okay. of uh, Troutdale, and 70 is the south side. Okay. Perfect. Do you color? Mm -hmm. Rain? I'll show you. Anything? Okay. Rain? Anything? He nope. shook his yep. head now. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Paul? My computer died. Nothing? Sandy, All turned right. her, Sandy turned her camera on. Oh, Sandy did. Yay! Thanks for coming, Sandy. Thanks for coming, Sandy. Thanks for coming, Sandy. How are you? Good. I was enjoy listening. <laughs> I could okay. There. Anybody want to move to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Yeah. <laughs> Show oh. me. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Have a good Thanks. day. Night. Sorry, Night. I'm trying to write everything down there. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you had to be the secretary too. I know. I went, the other committees seem to 